Okay, so now let's talk about chapter four, diction, idioms, and register. So this is basically like a lot of word choice stuff, um, like commonly confused words, that sort of thing, or like common mistakes with words. So this one right here is one that you should definitely pay attention to. A lot of students think that they can say could have, should have, uh, might of, like because that's how we talk. And this is why it's so dangerous on the exam to say like, I hear it, it sounds right because of things like this. You can't write that on the exam. That's technically wrong grammatically. So the correct way to say the, this would be could have, like all of these words need to be paired with have, not of. Now, if we're talking about than versus then, like the A version versus the E version, we use the A version for comparisons, like when we're comparing things, like my sister would rather go to the party than go to the library, like she would rather do something than something else you're comparing. Um, Anna has more followers than most other TikTok influencers. So a lot of times when you see the words like less or more, um, you'll have this version there because um, you're comparing things. Now, when you use the E version of then, it can mean these things. I like to just remember it as like, I use the A version for comparisons and I use the E version for everything else. So for instance, back then people did not have cell phones. I use the E version because I'm not comparing anything here. And this one says, I went to the park and then I saw a movie. So here, I'm using then not to compare things. And if you want to talk about like what it means in each of these contexts, like here it would be next, like and next I saw a movie. And then when we said back then, it would be like back at that time. And then the last op um, correct example says, my husband and I don't go out on dates very often. Babysitters are expensive. And then there's the cost of the actual date. That would be like in addition. And in addition, there's the cost of the actual date. Again, I think it's a lot easier to just say A is for comparisons, E is for everything else. So now let's go to the next one, affect versus effect. So basically the one with the A is the verb, like um, you're changing or influencing something or someone, um, like you're affecting someone. And then the E version is the noun. So like think of like cause and effect, like that's the E version where the effect is like the result or the consequence of a particular action. So here are some correct examples. You could say waking up late negatively affected Ava's entire day, like it negatively influenced her entire day. It's being used as a verb here. Um, and then in this case, it says waking up on time has many positive effects. It has many positive results. So that's when you would use the E version. Now we have this, um, the three different twos. So the ones that people get confused are like the one with one, um, one O and then the one with two O's. Mostly a lot of people just know this one, like T-W-O is the number one that we spell, like the number two, you spell it like this, T-W-O. Now, what I think is the easiest way to think about this is think of the double O one T-O-O as like, you're talking about like too much or something of, of something or like um it like it's usually some excessive amount that you're talking about or like very something's very something um so that would be the double o and then think of the one with um just one o as everything else so some correct examples would be i'm too tired like i'm excessively tired or i'm um i'm like too tired i'm I'm so tired, I'm excessively tired um, to go for a walk. So then to here would be like, you can't say that you're excessively go or like very go or also go, that that doesn't work. You're not like expressing, oh, there's like too much of something or like I'm to this or to that. So we use the one O. For the next option we have, we are reading that book too. Like we're reading that also, that's where it would mean also. I have two sisters, so this would be like the number two. That's why we use T-W-O. Derek threw the ball to Billy. Again, like the use case for everything else. Like I threw it to Billy. There's so many ways that you could use like the one O one um, that 
this is one of the instances I do this a lot throughout the book where I say like, hey, if you just know these two, like this version, and you say this is for everything else, you're good, you're golden. So just understand these ones right here. And the double O will, you'll most likely see that as like the very or excessively version, like it's too much of something or like I'm too tired or like those kinds of ways are like more common, I would say, but you could also see it as also. <laughs> So then let's keep on going. Um, also, you could say Jerome goes to school from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. So um, other common mistakes. There may be a question that requires you to differentiate between some commonly confused words listed below. However, the examples previously mentioned are more likely to show up on the exam. Yeah. Um, so these are like some other things that you might want to just look up if you want to. These are commonly confused words. You could just look up how they're used differently if you want to. But Again, like when I don't list something out, like <laughs> when I just give you like a list like this, I'm like, hey, go look it up. It's probably because there might be one question on it. If that on the exam, this is not very common. So out of everything, I would like say this is a last resort. If like you're trying to get a perfect score or something, then maybe look at this stuff. But um, there's so many commonly confused words that these are just the most common ones. Like they could throw anything at you. So that's why it's not like super um, efficient to spend all your time on this or like a significant amount of time on this. Um, same thing with the using correct prepositions. There's so many different words that like you have to, like that you, they could throw at you. These are just the most common ones. Um, so this is just kind of like words that would be followed by about um, usually, or like words that would be followed by as usually, like that sort of thing. You can memorize all these if you want, but again, it's probably gonna be like, if it shows up one question. Um, and a lot of it is like, you're not going to remember all of these. Like it's most of the time, like, you know, this because like you've been reading throughout your like school career and like you notice it and like you remember that like, this is how I usually see it. Um, so let's keep going. So for, um, this chapter that also there's like, um, the accomplish or emphasis questions. So like you'll spot these by um, this verbiage, like most effectively emphasizes, accomplish that goal or accomplish that most effectively. Basically these are, is it emphasizing or um, like accomplishing what it's supposed to? Is it like doing what it's supposed to based off of whatever question you get? So for instance, with this question right here, number one, it says, which choice most effectively emphasizes the depth of, Pedro, of Pedro's feelings for Inez? So, one means that we're going to be looking over here for um, which of these is the best option. So remember, we're not picking things that are true. We're picking things that actually fit the question and answer the question. So we want something that effectively, most effectively emphasizes, most effectively emphasizes his feelings for Inez. So just because something's true in the answer choices doesn't mean that it's answering our question. That's something really important to keep in mind on these exams. So let's see, let's just read the whole thing for fun. In the 14th century, the Portuguese royal court was shaken by a romance that would resonate for centuries. Inez de Castro, a lady in waiting to Princess Constance and Prince Pedro, the heir to the Portuguese throne, had fallen deeply in love. Although Pedro was married to Constance, his love for Inez was undeniable, and the two engaged in a secret affair that lasted several years. Constance's death in 1345 should have paved the way for Pedro and Inez to be together. However, King Alfonso IV, Pedro's father, was adamantly against their union. Fearing for the future of the Portuguese monarchy and wanting to avoid scandal, he then proceeded to orchestrate Inez's um, execution in... 1355, Pedro was brokenhearted and enraged by the loss of his beloved. Uh, Pedro began a rebellion against his father. Okay, so let's see which choice most effectively emphasizes um, that he, um, the depth of his feelings for Inez. So let's see, this is actually supposed to be right here that this is one. I forgot to change this to one. So that's actually a typo. That'll be fixed in the book. So this is actually supposed to be one right here because it was supposed to be that like you're changing this part. So which choice most effectively emphasizes the depth of Pedro's feelings for Inez? So we're replacing this por portion right here. 
So it says Pedro was both brokenhearted and enraged by the loss of his beloved. So then let's see. Fueled by anger, Pedro ignited a rebellion against his father. That's talking about how he's angry towards his father, not Inez. Remember, answer the question, what most effectively emphasizes his feelings for Inez? Driven by love, Pedro sparked a rebellion against his father. He's driven by his love for Inez, so it's probably that one. Let's go through the others. Pedro dramatically rebelled against his father. He's not feeling dramatic towards Inez, so not that one. And this one, Pedro began a rebellion against his father. I mean, that doesn't really say anything about his feelings for Inez. So it's C. So let's keep going. So now we're going to talk about register. So register, register is basically saying, like, a lot of this is, like, matching. Like, it has to agree. Or, like, a lot of this, this could be even in the agreement context chapter, which most of this could be, but I couldn't put everything in one chapter. But basically everything falls down. Not, not everything, but almost everything falls down to does it agree with what it's supposed to? Does it match the context? So with register, it's like you does it agree with the context in terms of formality? Like if the if the writing is uh, pretty formal, is um, the part that they're asking you about to match also very formal or pretty formal? Um, is it pretty informal? Then you're going to match in terms of like it's that informal, like you're trying to match the level of formal or informal with your wording. Um, typically they're not going to go for extremes. Like they're not going to be like super duper formal or they're not going to be super duper informal. It can happen, but more, more likely it's more likely to happen where it's like kind of in the middle, um, and not like super towards one side or the other. Um, they avoid extremes on these exams. So let's go to this one right here. So it says, um, sorry, I didn't mean to give the answer choice away. So <laughs> um, this one says um, we're deciding between if we're going to keep this no change or if we're going to change it to one of these options right there. So let's read it. After Alfonso's death Pedro and Pedro's subsequent ascension to the throne, he did something unprecedented. Pedro claimed that he and Inez had been secretly married and thus she was the legitimate queen of Portugal. To further solidify her status, Pedro ordered Inez's body to be exhumed and to be crowned as the queen in a grand ceremony. It was an act of love, a love that defied societal norms, royal duties, and even death itself. So let's see. So far, if we're thinking about like the tone of this passage, it's fairly formal. It's not like super duper duper formal, but it's pretty formal, like most of these passages are on the exam. So we want to have something that matches, uh, matches that. So let's see. It was an act of love, a love that defied societal norms, royal duties, and even death itself. Yeah, that seems pretty okay. Um, B, it was a thing that showed their deep love. That's way too informal, like thing, no. It was a gesture that was representative of their intense amorous entanglement. That is like super duper wordy, formal, like... <laughs> big words, that sort of thing. <laughs> um, like, while they do use big words, it's not, like, this obnoxious <laughs> in the passage. So then we have D, their love was kind of a big deal. That's, like, something you say to your best friend, not, like, on the exam. Like, it doesn't match with the context here. They weren't talking like that. So it's definitely a no change. So now let's do the quiz. Now, if you have this book, I would encourage you to attempt the quiz by yourself first. Now that I've shown you some examples using the strategies I've shown you and keeping those in mind and then pausing this and doing corrections, like correct your work after you do the quiz, see which ones you got wrong. Try to correct it by yourself before you come back to this video and watch the explanations because it's really easy to watch this video and be like, oh yeah, I get it based off of what she did versus you actually thinking it through and getting it right yourself the second time around, it's a lot different in like how you'll retain that information and how well you'll retain it. So I would recommend doing that and only watching this video for like stuff you're stuck on or if you want verification that your thought process was correct to get to the correct answer. So noting that, let's keep going. So we're going to, um, on the exam, they underline, but I like bolded because I thought it would be easier for people to see because I don't know what like I said in the introduction part, I think it was the introduction. I don't know what wizardry they do on the exam, but I could not for the life of me get the lines not to go through periods and commas. So we're just going to go with it. I feel like you guys are old enough and like hopefully wise enough to know that like you can pretend that this is underlined. 
Okay, so which of the following alternatives to the, to the bolded portion would not be acceptable? Now on these exams, I even though it's all bold, it, not bolded, all uppercase, like when they say not or accept, I would still circle it because you would not believe how many times students still mess that up and they'll put like the affirmative instead of like answering what's not acceptable, they put what is acceptable. So like just circle that to make sure that you absolutely <laughs> see that. Um, so which of the following alternatives to the bolded portion would not be acceptable? We're doing number one right here. So we're talking about this portion. So let's read two sentences above and below. So I'm going to go two sentences above would start right here. Although Pedro was married to Constance, his love for Inez was undeniable and the two engaged in a secret affair that lasted years. Constance's death in 1345 should have paved the way for Pedro and Inez to be together. However, King Alfonso IV, Pedro's father, was adamantly against their union, fearing for the future of the Portuguese monarchy and wanting to avoid scandal. He then pr proceeded to orchestrate Inez's execution in 1355. Okay. So which of these would not be acceptable there? So was adamantly against her union is what's already there. Was against their relationship, disapproved of their relationship, was unsupportive of their union, had fought their connection. So was adamantly against their union, was against their relationship. That's pretty much saying the same thing. and It matches pretty well in terms of like how formal or informal it is disapproved of their relationship, that's like a synonymous, was unsupportive of their union. Again, that's synonymous and like it's using like pretty similar verbiage, um, like wording. And then we have D had fought their connection. That's something you say when you're like, you're describing like lovers fighting their connection for each other. It's not necessarily like an outside party fighting their connection. So I would say it's D. So let's keep going. So for number two, we're going to now be doing, let me get rid of that. For number two, we're potentially um, changing this portion right here. Just these two words. Fearing for the future of the Portuguese monarchy and wanting to avoid scandal, he then proceeded to orchestrate. So he then, it should be, we're not comparing anything. We're saying like, next he did this. So it would be the E version if we're going to use uh, then. So it definitely can't be no change. He then proceeded to orchestrate. So it would be proceeded. Um, yeah, because it's like in the past. It's happening in the past. So we have to use past tense and these are not in past tense. So it would just be B. So let's go to now number three. Let me erase this. For number three, we're deciding if um, we're going to change or replace or keep this, sorry. Heartbroken and enraged by the loss of his beloved, Pedro begun a rebellion against his father. So we don't say begun. That's not, that's not a thing. <laughs> we can say like begin or begins. We can say began or we could say will begin, beginning. Like those are things, but begun is not a thing. Um, so it's not going to be that. Um, in the um and then we have begins began will begin will begin so now we have to think okay in the context of what we're talking about um what verb tense are we going to be using is it going to be present is it going to be past is it going to be future well it's going to be past so it's going to be c and just to clarify i just realized like i might have said something a bit confusing we can't just say begun by itself like, that's not a thing is what I meant. We do say like, he had begun, or like, um, they have begun, or he has begun, or they have begun, like those types of things. Um, or we could say had also had begun. But we don't just say begun by itself. That's what I meant by like, be we don't just say begun. <laughs> okay, so now let's try number four. So for number four, we're talking about this guy right here. Which of the following alternatives would not, again, I'm going to circle that, be acceptable? So we're looking for what does not work. After Alfonso's death and Pedro's subsequent ascension to the throne, he did something unprecedented. Pedro vented that he and Inez had been secretly married, and thus she had she was the legitimate queen of Portugal. So something he did something unprecedented like this is some like shocking sort of thing or like something that's unexpected out of the blue um 
like out of the norm, that sort of thing. So we want to look for a word that doesn't um, doesn't go with that me those meanings that we just stated. So orthodox. Orthodox is like sort of like traditional, like unorthodox would be like closer to unprecedented. Orthodox is like the complete opposite. So it's definitely not going to be that one. Um, and then you could see like the other ones all have similar meanings, like remarkable, astonishing, unparalleled. Like those all go along with unprecedented. So then now let's go to number five. So for number five, we're going to be doing this one right here. Um, so let's see. Pedro vented that he and Inez had been secretly married and thus she was the legitimate queen of Portugal. Vented is like you vent to your friends, like you like you're telling them like you're you know, like you're venting kind of like complaining but like getting things off your chest like that's not the right word here so it's definitely not no change he shouted that he and Inez had been secretly married um no that doesn't make sense here either he proclaimed like when you um when you say something like with uh authority like you proclaim it um it, it it's usually like some type of like powers behind the voice like like it's not just like, um, it's not just kind of like a meh, like you said it with a meh, like you proclaim, like you proclaim something proudly is sort of like a word that's associated with proclaim a lot. Um, and then we have hinted, like he hinted that he and, and her were secretly married. That doesn't make sense either um, because he just outright stated it in the context of this passage, it would be that he states it. He's not like hinting after his father died. That doesn't make sense. Like he just is saying it and he's saying it out loud, like as the king. So proclaim um, would be the correct word to use there. So now let's do quiz two. Again, if you haven't, um, if you have this book, I would recommend pausing the video, trying it by yourself and then going and doing corrections by yourself before, um, returning to this video if you're stuck on anything. So um, we're going to be doing number 14 right here. It says, which choice clearly indicates that Fields is speaking with determination? So again, this is one where you have to like focus on what the question is actually asking. We want a choice that tells us that he's speaking with determination. So speaking with determination implies is like, you're implying you're not outright saying it saying it like you might um imply something like when you're insulting someone you don't really like say what you want to say straight out but you say it kind of like hinting at what you what you mean and they're supposed to get the gist of it from like that subtle statement that you made that's like implying that's not what's happening um here that that would be like the opposite of speaking with determination that's like kind of beating around the bush so it's not that one declares like if you declare something it's like think of the office like i declare bankruptcy like that <laughs> that's declaring but you can't do that in real life unfortunately um and then suggests like i suggest i'm suggesting but i'm not outright saying it i'm i'm thinking like i'm it's kind of closer to like hinting um like you suggest like this could be a thing but like we're not dreamers like i'm suggesting that maybe we're not dreamers but i'm not um, I'm not saying it like in a super determined way. Um, states is just like you're telling, like she says, like she states, um, that's not implying or that's not, um, stating anything with, or that's not speaking with determination. So it would be G declares. So then now we're going to do number 10. So we're doing this guy right here. So we're trying to determine if that's the right word. So let's read the whole paragraph. Dr. Hemingway took her observations and analyzed them in her research lab at the University of Ottawa, conducting a series of controlled experiments mimicking potential threats to study the monarch's reactions. Butterflies exposed to shadow movements mimicked an approaching bird endorsed the same rapid descent behavior. However, when the same group was subjected to various odors, only specific scents triggered the release of the monarch's defen defensive chemicals. Okay, so... Um, mimicking an approaching bird, uh, butterflies exposed to shadow movements, mimicking an approaching bird, endorse the same rapid descent behavior. So like when you endorse something, it's kind of like 
you'll you probably have heard this in the context of like endorsing somebody for president like you endorse a candidate like you you put your name behind a candidate like you um you're like hey i support this person like i endorse them um that's most commonly like probably how you've heard it in your daily life that doesn't really like match here like we're not um how would you say it like like we're not saying we support the same rapid like or that um, butterflies, explosive shadow movements support the same rapid descent behavior. Like that doesn't make sense. They're not like supporting it or like in support of it. So it's not going to be F. So then let's talk about um, G. So for G, it's saying, okay, advertised. So butterflies exposed to shadow movements advertise the same rapid descent behavior. I mean, advertises, you guys know what ads are like. When you advertise, like, it doesn't necessarily have to be in, like, the context of an ad, but, like, it's kind of similar in meaning, like, you, you're you putting it out there, like, you're ad, you advertise, you let people know, like, butterflies exposed to shadow movements, uh, like, put it out there, let people know the same rapid descent behavior. That doesn't make sense. So it's not going to be G. And then we have noted, like, in this context, it would be like noticed, like butterflies exposed to shadow movements noticed the same rapid descent behavior. I mean, I don't think the butterflies are noticing anything. Like that doesn't really make sense. Like we, we're not inside a butterfly's mind. Like that doesn't, we can't say that. <laughs> That's kind of weird. So then it has to be J, but let's just check. Um, so exhibited. So like, let me think. Exhibited is like, it would be like displayed. Like exhibited is like displayed. Like Butterflies exposed to shadow movements displayed the same rapid descent behavior. Like they they showed the same um, rapid descent behavior. So yes, that that matches the best to the context.